if you've been ripped off. I felt very cheated, cheated and conned. But are struggling to get back your hard-earned cash. Everything that I'd worked for was gone, basically. Help is at hand from the sheriffs. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement. We have an outstanding writ of control. They're back with a brand new team, determined to get you the money you're owed. You're wasting our time. I'm now going to call a locksmith. Acting with the High Court's authority. He's the one with a court writ, so he's the victim, not you. They have the power to remove assets. We're here to retrieve full balance, if not remove goods otherwise. To ensure you're not shortchanged. The sheriffs being our last saviour and hope. Every year, sheriffs in England and Wales recover your unpaid debts totalling £100 million. I've got my money back, and now we can put this matter to bed. Coming up, when horses began illegally grazing on his land, Ram Chohan didn't know which way to turn. This wasn't just a scenario where the horses just randomly turned up one day. The individuals that are behind this have been trying to threaten our family on a number of occasions. But when the sheriffs take the reins on the eviction... Just one second, we've lost the other horse transporters. Will the operation be sabotaged? They can come back mob-handed and try and take the horses back from the stables. If you've had a year and a half with this case, the only time you're going to get is the next hour. When a second-hand car dealer refuses to pay a customer who was sold a defective vehicle... Oh, he's got a nice new one series here. Six grand. That's going to hurt. Luke and Grant drive a hard bargain. All of them cars out there, we're going to remove them. And when the sheriffs chase a debt owed by the boss of a carpet company... You've got to be joking. ..they're forced to join the queue. Are you enforcing the rip? Yeah. yeah. The sheriffs are regularly called in to carry out evictions. Whether it's squatters that have taken over a residential property... Hello! It was a bit of a rude awakening for him. ...or those illegally living in commercial premises. we got a camper. Morning, Morning mate. mate. It's High Court enforcement agents people turn to when unwanted visitors refuse to leave. They really don't give a, give a damn for the property, so they just basically live as if it's a tip. But the riskiest evictions of all often involve trespassers with four legs rather than two. Good morning, guys. Thanks for coming out. We're meeting here at 4 a.m. In Berkshire, under the cover of darkness, enforcement agent James King is leading today's operation. We are carrying out an eviction on behalf of the horse bailiffs to remove six fly grazing horses from a piece of land. Events leading up to today's operation began nearly 20 years ago, when Ram Chohan and his family came across a small field for sale near to their home in Berkshire. The property was greenbelt at the time and it was empty, vacant, um, and we bought it from a property auction. And we just saw it as a long-term good investment. Um, so we purchased it and thought that one day it might be worth something and we could probably you know, develop something on it. Um, and that ultimately led us to purchasing the property. Over the years, the land lay empty and steadily increased in value. But two years ago, Ram and his family were approached by someone who claimed they wanted to buy the plot. We started getting you know, cold calls from an anonymous buyer who was interested in purchasing the property. And at that stage, you know, it was, we thought it might be a good idea to actually cash out on the investment that we've made, given that the land was idle and it was sitting vacant. After sounding out the offer, Ram and his family decided they didn't want to sell the land and thought that would be the end of it. When we refused to sell the property, he one day emailed us out the blue and said, you've got horses on your site. When I first saw the pictures of 25 horses on the field, it was quite nerve-wracking, you know, a level of anxiety does set in. Ram had no idea who the horses belonged to or why they were illegally grazing on his land. You could see that they were not well looked after. Um, you know, there wasn't sufficient food on the, on the property for them. Um, they were effectively drinking rainwater. 
When we initially did research about what to do with the horses, it effectively, you know, we understood that we are liable for the animal's welfare. But the horses weren't the only problem. Around this time, Ram received letters from the land registry stating someone had applied to claim ownership of his plot. We learned that local individuals um, who are interested in kind of land grabbing or have been known to land grab in the local area were trying to effectively grab the site but via adverse possession and claim that they've been on the property for more than 80 years when there's actually no one there, just fly racing horses. And that's when we started thinking that there's something fishy going on here. Ram was told the people trying to take ownership of his land were members of the travelling community and had put the horses in his field to help legitimise their claim. It, it, this wasn't just a scenario where the horses just randomly turned up one day. The individuals that are kind of behind this um, have been trying to threat, threaten our family um, a number of, on a number of occasions. They've you know, been to our business and, and you know, almost told my family, we're going to take the land off you. The land that was meant to be a little investment for the future had quickly turned into a nightmare. It's taken a toll on our family on the, on the basis that when does it end? You know, what's next? When will it occur again? What will they do next? Um, and, and that's always playing in the back of your mind. Ram and his family spent a lot of time and money successfully fighting the claim on his land. However, six horses remain illegally grazing on his plot. You don't actually know what to think uh, because, you know, it's not often that you're in a scenario where you have livestock on a property that's yours. Concerned about the legal challenge, the horse's welfare and that his family could be responsible for looking after them, Ram decided he had to take action. After speaking to the solicitors and speaking to the police, I think that all avenues lead down to speaking to the sheriffs and effectively, you know, the sheriffs being our last saviour and hope to bring this to a resolution and remove the animals from the property. The sheriffs have called in the horse bailiffs, who specialise in equine removals. And today, there's a lot riding on James and the team. We're going to move to site in convoy, horse handlers and the dog handler. If you could stay at the end of Long Lane. The sheriffs have been attacked on horse evictions like this in the past, so they're taking the threats received by Ram and his family seriously. To let you know, guys, the police are here with us in landmark car. The high risk um, element of um, these evictions is we are taking um, the owner's horses away, and um, by us taking the horses away, it can cause aggression. This is the risk of the possible travellers turning up um, and obviously trying to take the horses off the field at the same time as we're um, trying to gather the horses. If you hear me shout down the radio, out, 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 three times. It means that we've been compromised and we need to leave. Let's get moving and let's stay in contact via radios. The horse bailiffs have put together a 12-strong team of enforcement agents, horse handlers, dog handlers, a trained vet and the police. They make the short journey to Ramsfield. We're here. The illegal trespassers have dumped a concrete block behind the gate. Just this block here, yeah. Any hope of gaining access to the horses relies on a hydraulic crane. OK, pick it up, put it there out of the way of the gate, yeah? That'll do, mate. That'll be all right. The concrete block has now been moved. The owners of the horses have been given numerous warnings that if the animals are not removed, the horse bailiffs will do it for them. Prepare to move, mate. Prepare to move. With the horse transporters in position, the next challenge is locating the animals in the pitch black. Good, good news. The horses have come up to us, um, so we haven't had to go around the whole field. So, yeah, out of the six horses, we've, um, we've got white head collars on five of them. We've got a rope round um, the sixth one. It's a little bit timid. Um, it's not liking having a head collar on. The, the biggest, the biggest problem is if if she runs. Um, there's a big field there, and the last thing we want to do is have to have to run around there. 
Concerned the reluctant horse could become distressed, the handlers call for the vet to administer a sedative. So we're waiting sort of 10, 15 minutes for, for that to kick in. Okay. Come on, one, two. And you. Although the owners of the horses have been given warnings that the animals will be removed, for the safety of the team, it's imperative they get the horses onto the transporters as quickly and discreetly as possible. Four out of the six are loaded. Um, there's two left to come. One of them hasn't got a head collar on yet. Yeah, We're exactly. hoping that was the one that was darted. And hopefully, we should be able to yeah. um, get the last two loaded and we can be on our way to the finish point of the operation. Right, we can just push her over. Yeah. Okay. 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 To everyone's relief, the last horse is finally on board. A sign giving the owners 96 hours to come forward to claim the six horses is pinned to the gate. Yeah, let's go. Later. I'm staying with the last horse transport. Can you keep an eye on the front two, please? Events take a dramatic turn. Just one second, we've lost the other horse transporters. Few of us can afford to be left out of pocket. If you've been let down by faulty goods or substandard services and are struggling to get your money back, you can use the county courts to recover your hard-earned cash. Around two million claims are made every year in England and Wales and can be filed by post or online for a small fee. Both parties in the case will be asked to submit evidence and you may have to attend a court hearing. If you win your case, a county court judgment or CCJ will be issued against the debtor. If they still don't pay, it's time to call the sheriffs. Rarely a week goes by without the sheriffs being called upon to collect a debt from a second-hand car dealer on behalf of a disgruntled customer. And these enforcements are hardly ever straightforward. Today, enforcement agents Luke Peacock and Grant Bailey are on their way to a car dealer in the Midlands to chase a debt that's been unpaid for almost two years. We're heading off to Peterborough this afternoon uh, to visit a company called Car Team. The judgment was entered in default as the, the defendant actually never made a defence claim. The car team owes money to a lady who purchased a second-hand vehicle that later developed a fault. The customer took the case to court and won, but still hasn't received the money she's owed. The sheriffs have visited before, over a year ago, but came up against a tricky debtor. During the previous agent's visit, there was two payments made. One was of £2,000, um, and then a further £1,000 was paid the following day. Um, since that point, the defendant made an application to have the judgment set aside, but it was actually thrown out of court. So um, the writ's now um, live. There's no current ongoing court cases. It's all been thrown out, so we're, we're back today to, to enforce the remaining balance. The sheriffs need just over £4,500 to pay back the customer and cover fees. They're determined not to leave empty-handed. Being a, a car sales garage, um, we should hope to find some vehicles there um, should we need to actually look at, start taking control of goods, etc. What's the place called? Um, car team. The sheriffs pull up to what looks like someone's house, with a healthy number of cars for sale in the side garden. And there's a man waiting outside. Hi, mate. You this place? Pardon? You this place? I'm not. No, I'm waiting for him to arrive. You're waiting for him? Yeah. All right. What, is he out on a test drive or something? No, hopefully he's arriving with a car that I've paid for. Ah. Right. You don't start trying to hurry him now. So we've arrived on what we believe is the correct um, premises. Um, looks like there's a customer here waiting for a car to collect that he's paid for. So he's pretty concerned at the fact that we're here. Um, and he's waiting for um, who we believe to be the defendant to arrive with his, his car that he's just bought from him. So we'll wait for the guy to come back and see what he has to say. 
A few minutes later, the customer has just got off the phone with the debtor. What's he saying? Oh, he's saying it's at the garage, pick it up at six. What garage? He won't tell me. Well, that's clever, ain't it? How much did you pay for the vehicle? Oh, I mean, it was two grand. What year? Oh, wait. The receipt I got. Lovely, thank you. Sold by Motor Firm. The sheriffs believe Motor Firm could be another trading name of the debtor thereafter, Mr. Naeem Akta. You paid for it already? Yeah. And then it was getting MOT'd. And they said, yeah, get it MOT'd over the weekend and come back at the start of this week to pick it up. I'm just thinking of the joys I'm going to have trying to get that money back now. Mm. I guess it'll be speaking to you guys again. <laughs> A few minutes later, a second man turns up. No, he's got two meetings mm -hmm. scheduled. He's got two meetings he's scheduled that he's late for. Really? He's coming to buy a car as well? He's coming to pick up a car. Wow. Looks like he's in demand. <laughs> Clearly. The second customer is also waiting for a car, having shelled out a £250 deposit. But it sounds like the debtor isn't coming back. Have any of these guys spoke to him? Uh, he was just on the phone to him, the guy that's been here before. He said he'll have to come back later for the car. It's not likely he's down the road, he just told me he's come from London to buy the car. With two unhappy customers and no sign of the debtor, Luke puts in a call. You got a contact number for the guy? Yeah. I'm, I'm a High Court enforcement agent. I'm down at the causeway to enforce a High Court writ. No, no, you've mistaken me. I'm not here to buy a car. We're here for um, the car team here at the causeway. There's an outstanding writ which we're here to collect. The man on the end of the phone is claiming he doesn't work for the car team, but for another car dealer called Motor Firm. Balance, how much does he owe? Well, do you work for the car team? Right, then I can't tell you what the balance is. Why would you want to know what the balance is if you don't work for them? Well, we're going to start removing vehicles from this premises if we don't speak to someone down here shortly. I've told him that I'm here for the, the car team. He says it's the motor firm trading from here, but we've got a strong belief that the car team do have vehicles here. Um, it's just a case of, at the moment, we've got no-one to talk to, actually, in person, so... I'm just waiting for a callback from one of, the, one of the managers and then see if we can make any progress then. With no phone call back, the sheriffs decide to take matters into their own hands. Let's see if the office is open. Yeah, they're all very nice cars. One on that's popped, I don't know about that. He's even got more cars back there. The good news is assets are seemingly a plenty. Oh, he's got a nice new one series here. Six grand. That's gonna hurt. The sheriffs want nothing more than to seize a vehicle to get the out-of-pocket customer their money back. But they have to be sure it's owned by the debtor. Locked it. That is one mouldy banana, by the way. The, the actual, what they've got marked as a sales office is locked up, um, so we can't gain entry to, to try and find evidence linking it into the, to the company should we need it. The office door might not be open. Well, it's got 74,000 miles on it. But to Grant's surprise, many of the cars are. Just basically looking in the vehicle, See if there's any keys or any proof of ownership. With no sign of any keys or paperwork suggesting who the cars belong to, for now, continuing the enforcement is too risky. They're trying to duck a dive. Um, they know we're here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to leave them a notice to say we've been. Um, we'll give them seven days to pay the balance. If they don't pay the balance within that time, then the plan for us will be to come back later. Hello, sir. Looking for the car team. When the sheriffs return, 
You've told us that Mr. Actor has no affiliation with this place. Within two minutes, I've found evidence to the contrary. Will they finally get the customer the money they're owed? Sir, with the greatest respect, you've had a year and a half with this case. The only time you're going to get is the next hour. The horse bailiffs, with help from James and the sheriffs, have just successfully evicted six horses that have been illegally grazing on land owned by Ram Chohan. Yeah, Luke, DH1, dog handler one is with the second horse box, you're fine. The team will now drive the animals in convoy to secure stables. If you see anyone following you, please radio me immediately, please. They're now entering arguably the most critical stage of this operation. Is This is where we're most vulnerable, because if anyone had compromised us or seen us while we was on site loading the horses, so they could follow the horse transporters back to the secure stables and try and um, grab the horses. We're all radio linked together. We stay as a convoy and we make sure for the next 15, 20 miles, no one's following us till we're fully out of this area. A few minutes later, James receives a message in his earpiece from one of the team in another vehicle. OK, I'm just going to check it out. A car in front has just broken the team's convoy. James is extremely concerned. Yeah, can one of the dog handlers go ahead, please? If they follow the horse transporters, potentially they could come back mob handed at a later day and try and take the horses back from the stables. One second, we've lost the other horse transporters. I'm staying with the last horse transporter. Can you keep an eye on the front two, please? Please, thank you, mate. With the team now on high alert, James moves in to suss out the vehicle that's broken the convoy. What I've done is I'll just overtake the horse box, go and check who's in the driving seat, just have a look who's there. Just someone going to work, nothing to worry about. Could the horse box pass me again, please? Luckily, this time, it was a false alarm. I'm quite safe in the fact that we're not being followed at all. We have had incidents in the past uh, where the travellers have tried following us. It was just someone going to work, so it's absolutely fine. And we're now back in convoy together. All convoy, all convoy. Finish location is one and a half miles away one and a half miles. Thanks to the sheriff's escort, the horses are just minutes away from their secret destination, safe and sound. Now here we go, we're coming off now. The horse transporters aren't being followed and they're on their way back to secure stables. So overall, the operation has been a complete success. And now we can get a coffee. For landowner Ram and his family, there's finally an end to an episode that's hung over them for almost two years. Yes, I've just received a phone call from the sheriffs. They've said that the operation to remove the horses was successful, and I'm, I'm really pleased about it. It's a, it's a conclusion that we've been waiting for for such a long time, and um, one that we're really ecstatic about. The sheriffs are fantastic from the beginning to the end. They, they described the entire process. They gave us an operational plan of how it's all going to work. Um, and everything went down to a T, so we, we were really happy with that. Later... Hello. ..the story takes another dramatic turn. Most of the ponies and horses have a microchip. Upon checking this one, it is actually a stolen pony. If you've won a county court judgment but are still out of pocket because it hasn't been paid, for £66 you can get the case transferred up to the High Court, which will issue a writ for enforcement by the sheriffs. Can you please come to the door? Here with the High Court writ today. We will be executing today, if not removing goods. These High Court awards have to be paid, and the sheriffs have unique legal powers to ensure you get the money you're owed here regarding a High Court writ of control. We can't get off the site today without full payment. If you shut the door us, we'll get locked up here. Why are you preventing us access? And there's no limit on the size of debt they can pursue. £8,691.22p. £40,386. You can just do the bank transfer. 
If they're successful, they'll recover your money and costs from the debtor. Brilliant. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. As well as their own fees, which are set by the government. We'd have to take the case to the next stage and we'd have to get removal trucks here to remove your goods. If the sheriffs can't get your money, you'll be asked to pay another £90 to cover their costs. Today, enforcement agents Ben and Miles are in Yorkshire with a High Court writ against a carpet business. Right, we're off to Magic Carpets um, in Halifax for just over £2,000, hopefully a, a nice recoverable amount. Magic Carpets in Halifax owes money to a lady who purchased five carpets for her home. But after they were fitted, she discovered two of them were not the carpets she'd paid for. After giving Magic Carpets ample opportunity to rectify the mistake, the customer took the dispute to court. But when the company director called in sick and failed to attend a hearing, the judge found in her favor. However, 16 months on, she's still waiting for her money. Entering a large warehouse full of valuable carpets, the sheriffs have every reason to be hopeful of recovering the money. But the job of the sheriffs is full of surprises. You've got to be joking. Another enforcement agent is already in the company director's office. Afternoon. Not a lucky day. Are you um, enforcing it? Yeah. Yeah. We've been instructed to issue insolvency papers. Right. Guys, you want to go back to the car outside? Yeah, we'll go outside, yeah. We'll, wait. we'll just stay out of here. Insolvency papers, otherwise known as statutory demands, are issued against a company by creditors who are getting impatient for their money. Once the papers are served, the company has 21 days to respond, or else it could be wound up. If Magic Carpets is just a few weeks away from going into administration, it's all the more important the sheriffs get paid as soon as possible. Cheers, Bob. But as soon as they enter his office, Hiya. the director puts Miles onto his sister, who's a solicitor. Hello. Uh, it's Miles Whitworth. I'm here from um, the High Court. And asks our camera operator to leave. The sister then claims that he missed the court hearing due to illness and says they've applied to get the judgment set aside. Have you just made an application? OK, well, an, an application doesn't stop a writ, unfortunately. OK, so we're, we're going to have to enforce this writ. Doesn't matter if you've spoken to the courts. Unfortunately, the courts haven't advised you right, because you've only made an application. The company director's sister believes that no enforcement can take place until the case is concluded. In fact, once a county court judgment has been issued, the defendant is liable to pay the debt, regardless of their intention to appeal. So I'm going to leave this with you for about half an hour, OK? And then goods will have to start me removing. But the sister is refusing to advise that the debt should be paid. Goods will be removed then. Look, half an hour, and then they're going to have to start enforcing this. Thank you. She's just shouting down the phone to us. So we've been speaking to the defendant, and the defendant's sister's been getting involved, who's a solicitor, and she's uh, been advising him some. Very bad <laughs> advice, really. She was saying don't pay them anything because they can't take any of the goods away, but we are commanded by the court to take control of goods. There's a lot more aggro than we wanted. With no offer of payment on the table, the sheriffs begin casting their eyes over potential assets. These are all right. Yeah. Good quality carpet. Yeah, yeah. So those rugs are the money as well. God, yeah. Hundreds of pounds, then. High-quality carpets are worth up to £50 per square metre. Forklift truck. It's worth a few hundred quid to the right person as well. And they're soon satisfied enough goods are here to push for full payment. But with the message not sinking in, is the magic carpets in Halifax's boss about to have the rug pulled from under his feet? Look, an application does not stop a writ, I've told you. The last hearing you were supposed to attend to, that was the 2nd of August. You've, you've had six weeks to speak to the court, but there's nothing in place to stop us enforcing this debt. You're really not helping your brother here. He's saying that we can't take stuff, but we can. You're giving him very bad advice. Basically, you're risking putting your brother out of business here for, for 2,000 quid. 
Realizing the threat to his livelihood, the company director breaks ranks and offers a thousand pounds. No, the fact is, there is a good deal to cover that debt, and we will do that. We will take the likes of the forklift truck. It's two thousand and twenty-seven pounds as it stands. If if we end up removing goods, it will go up. Finally, the director hands over three hundred pounds in cash. There we go. And a relative agrees to make a bank transfer for the rest. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Well, get out your hair. Okay. Take care. Take care. Have a good right. day. Cheers. It's a hard won victory for the sheriffs. A lot of going around in circles, wasn't there? Uh, it was frustrating. Um, she was getting involved and taking it a bit more personally than maybe she should have done. So it got a little bit heated. In the end, they did come to the census and realised they had to pay it. And that's what all we're after. We're not here to, you know, put people out of business or make life too difficult, but we are here to do a job and, re and recover money on other people's behalf. Magic Carpet's application to get the judgment set aside was later dismissed after a court hearing. For the customer who received the wrong carpets, her 16-month battle to get her money back is finally over. The owner of Magic Carpets in Halifax told us that he has been in this trade for over 20 years and is an honest, respectable and trustworthy individual, and that he would go above and beyond to help his customers. Luke and Grant are on their way back up to Peterborough, feeling a sense of déjà vu. Dominique un chéri compte avec Benjamin. Mate, I haven't got a clue what you're saying. It's been two weeks since they visited the car team to get the money owed to a customer who has sold a faulty vehicle. It was unsuccessful on our last visit due to nobody being there, nobody willing to come back. The port cabin was also locked, which we believe to be their office. So um, because we couldn't gain access, we weren't able to determine and get any evidence of any vehicles that belonged to the debtor. We've got a locksmith on standby. We've also got a recovery truck on standby. So this time, we will not be leaving empty-handed. Are we there yet? Yeah? Two minutes. Oh, we're up here on the left, don't we? Yeah, just past that. There's guys here. No, it's here. Oh, yeah, so it is. Drucking a part of the company. Yeah, I'd say so. They're already eyeballing us. The outstanding debt for the faulty car is owned by Mr. Naeem Akhtar, trading as the car team. Hello, sir. Looking for the car team? No, they don't operate from here, no? OK, what proof do you have to show that, sir? Maybe a company has a Whatever you've got to prove that they're not operating here. But uh, the company has the motor firm limited. The outstanding debt for the faulty car is owed by Mr. Naheem Akhtar, trading as the car team. Naeem Akhtar we're looking for, yeah? Mahmoud Mohammed Sudan. Sorry? Mahmoud Mohammed. But Grant's not convinced the man who's claiming to run a company called Motor Firm is telling him the whole story. What relationship you got with Mr. Akhtar? Mm -hmm. Mr. Akhtar has still been responding to correspondence that's been sent to this address. Right, is your office open? Can you let us in, please? We do have a, we do have a rip from a high court. If you don't let, if you don't let us in, we'll just use a locksmith. I've got a customer living in Vibersman at the moment, so if you want anything, I'll send it right in. Right, well, we request access to your office, so as my colleague explained, unless you want to open it, we'll use a locksmith. Give me five minutes, let me just deal with this customer. Oh, you. Well, you can do, you, you can open the office and then you can deal with your, your customer. No, we just need to check the keys over come back two minutes, yeah? He's basically claimed that the company no longer trades from here, or the debtor no longer trades from here. Um, we've advised him that we require access to his office. He's explained it's locked, but Luke's just gone ahead and opened it, so now we're going to go in there and have a look. Here we go, we've got a board full of keys. There you go, logbook straight away. It's a promising start. 
but in order to go after the assets, the sheriffs need hard evidence that the car team are still trading from this address. OK, well, we've asked for access. You've said it was locked. It's open. How long you been here, sir? How long you been here? What do you mean? How long you been here? Told you you mean about a six month why I don't understand. So why yeah. are you getting deliveries for the car team? Because you get deliveries all the time. You told me you got no association we've with it. Well you you've opened it as well. Yeah. Well we've got no association with it. Right, stop to, listen, it's cut this we've got no association with the car team. Right. One. Okay, let, let me put it in simple terms. Let me put it in simple yeah. terms. All of them cars out there, if you haven't got proof, yeah. By where bank statements and receipts for every single item, yeah. we're going to remove them. So all them we do cars. not all of them, what do you mean? All not all of them. First of all, but you either need to one cooperate with us yeah. and get Mr. Actor on the phone, yeah. or two, you need to get your evidence together sharpish. We've now got reason to believe that the car team and Mr. Actor are still here. You've told us that Mr. Actor has no affiliation with this place. He's got nothing to do with this place. Right. Within two minutes, yeah. I've found evidence to the contrary. Satisfied that they have enough proof, the sheriffs aren't backing down, and the man agrees to get the debtor, Mr. Actor, on the phone. Yeah, you can give him a call without it. Got his number? His number, yeah. Yeah, true. Sure. A customer has waited for over a year and a half to get her money back, so Luke's determined to settle the debt once and for all. Yeah, Mr. Actor, yeah? Um. You could pay the remaining balance that you have outstanding. £3,593.34. Mr. Actor does acknowledge the debt, but says he won't be able to get the money together to pay it today. Sir, with the greatest respect, you've had a year and a half with this case. The only time, sorry, the only time you're going to get is the next hour. Right, can, can, I ask, can I ask you a question? Who's the guy we're here with now? Right, is it friendly or yeah? OK, you have an hour, sir. Yeah, we need to see the invoices for the cars. Oh, which one do you see? Every single one. I've managed to touch base with Mr Akhtar through the guy who's operating from here, who initially told us he had no association with him. There's potential that Mr Akhtar could still have something to do with this premises and could still be selling cars. So, fingers crossed, the, the guy just raises the funds and, and we can get out of here. With the debtor given one hour to pay up, Luke begins looking through receipts for the 50 or so cars in the field. RO15 UDE, Audi A3, from Whittlesea. And whose name's it in? Right, what about the cars at the front? Any of them you've got. But after combing through the car lot, there's no evidence suggesting the vehicles belong to the debtor, so removing one could be a costly mistake. Going through all of his uh, receipts that he's got for the vehicles, the, the guy that we spoke to is he's running a, a limited company from here. Um, it's a completely new organisation, legitimate company, you know, trying to run a successful business. The problem there is that the debtor actually used to work here. Um, he used to run a business from here. We've now established that the debtor has nothing to do with this address, so we could kind of leave this one, um, leave the guy um, to run his business, um, hope that the debtor does come true to his word, and then then we'll have it all settled. With zero leverage, Luke's running out of options. But a few minutes later, he gets a call. Hi, Mr. Actor. I'm very well, thanks. Are you? Desperate to avoid full payment, the debtor is looking for any other way out and is offering £1,000 today and the remaining two and a half thousand in three days' time. £1,000 within the next hour. Next hour, sir. Next hour and then we will give you till Monday to pay the balance. It's taken months to get to this point. If Mr. Actor can find the funds, the customer who bought the faulty car will finally get the money she's owed. The only way we could take payment is by cash or by bank transfer. So you're, you're going to pay a thousand pound by bank transfer, yeah? Okay, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Against the odds, it seems Mr. Actor has agreed to pay. 
He's told us that he will pay the thousand pounds of the down payment and clear the balance within the next few days. Uh, the office happy with that, clients happy with that, and ultimately I think it's the best result and the best outcome we could have achieved today. We got an arrangement out of the debtor, even though we didn't have any assets or any leverage. Good job, mate. Nice one. James still has work to do on the case involving the horses that were illegally grazing on Ram Chohan's land. It's been over 96 hours since the animals were successfully evicted. As no one has come forward to claim ownership, legally they can now be rehomed. So today we are off to the uh, secure stables. We like to um, come and check on the welfare of the horses with our experienced horse handlers. Due to the sensitive nature of their work, the horse handlers wish to remain anonymous. Hello. So James receives an update off camera. And there's been a dramatic twist to the story concerning this Shetland pony. Most, um, most of the ponies and horses um, have a microchip. If they are microchipped, it's in, it's in the neck. And um, upon checking this one, um, we found that it's actually a stolen pony. So what we have managed to find out, where we collected um, the horses and ponies from is around 100 miles away from where it was stolen. So this little lady is going to be returned to its workful owner. But after being somewhat neglected, some of the other horses are in need of medical attention. We had a report from our horse handlers that there are a serious number of welfare concerns. There is quite a major, uh, major tumour on there, which obviously the vet has had a look at and um, is um, obviously going to get that treated uh, prior to her being rehomed. A few days later... Oh, Delilah! Delilah the Pony has had surgery to remove the tumour from her leg and has just arrived at a busy livery yard, which will be her new home. I'm going to have such a bright future, do you know that? Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. Oi, oi. And she's greeted by her delighted new owner. This is home. Yes. Good journey. That's all right, then. The yard manager told me about Delilah and showed me pictures and I fell head over heels in love with her. And she's brilliant, she's wonderful, she's exactly what I want. Yeah, you've got to take your PJs off. Hey, you've got clean PJs too. She's very cheeky, very nosy, typical pony. So she'll be perfect, she'll have loads of, loads of pets, loads of cuddles. She's going to have a life of a princess, which is what she deserves. Following filming, Naeem Akhtar, trading as the car team, failed to make the payment he promised the sheriffs. A new writ has been issued against Mr Akhtar for the remaining balance. <laughs>